Hello friends, this video on locomotion and movement part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we understood uh, the basic types of the muscle tissues, we will try to understand the mechanism of muscle contraction. Now, when we talk about the concept of muscle contraction, we will basically be talking about the skeletal muscles because we are more interested to know about how the skeletal muscles work. That why? That's because the skeletal muscles are the voluntary muscles. That is, they move as per our own will. So we want to see that how this movement takes place and also the skeletal muscles produce movement in close coordination with bones and the uh, joints. So we want to understand that entire process of movement. So in order to know that, we still need to know a detailed knowledge on the structure of the skeletal muscles. So let us try to understand the uh, structure of the skeletal muscle. Now as you saw, now you might be wondering that when there are three types of muscle tissue, skeletal, smooth and cardiac, why are we talking about the skeletal muscle now specifically? Now this division of the muscular tissue into the three categories were based on many different things. For example, their location, where they are located, their appearance, how their structures are, their nature of their uh, regulation of various activities. For example, the skeletal muscles uh, are controlled by our will, whereas the smooth muscles cannot be controlled. They happen just on their own. Similarly, the cardiac muscles, they are very unique in themselves because they happen even without any kind of regulation or control from the nervous system. So that means because of these differences, the muscle tissues were divided into these three categories. But now we are going to talk about, we are trying to focus on the muscular movements or the external muscular movements which take place in our body which is largely due to the skeletal muscles and that is why we want to spend more time understanding how the skeletal muscles cause movement. So let us look at the structure of skeletal muscle. Now the various parts that together form the skeletal muscles are the muscle bundles which are also known as fascicles. So fascicles is just another term for muscle bundles. So each muscle tissue or each muscle is made up of muscle bundles. So what, what are these muscle bundles? Now let us think of a scenario. Let us suppose this person is doing exercise. So he is, what is he doing? He is just moving his hand up and down, holding this dumbbell, right? Now, if we try to observe the, what is there inside his arm, what do we see? We see that there are muscles which are present. So this is how muscles look like and these muscles in turn are connected to the bones. When these muscles cause contraction, they make the bones move and that is how movement occurs. Now let us focus on the muscles. So this is how the muscles look like. Now if you look at the cross section of the muscles, inside the muscles you have muscle bundles like this. Each of these spherical structure is a muscle bundle. So each of these is a muscle bundle which is also known as fascicle. There is another structure called fascia. So fascia is nothing but a kind of a connective tissue which connects the muscle bundles together. Because this is one muscle bundle, this is another muscle bundle, this is another muscle bundle, this is yet another muscle bundle. Now all these bundles need to be connected to each other and they are connected by a connective tissue which is called fascia. Next part is the muscle fibers. Now interestingly each muscle bundle in turn is made up of multiple muscle fibers. So if you see inside each bundle, this is one muscle bundle. Inside these bundles you again get to see some other structures present which are known as the muscle fibers. So now I have projected one of the muscle bundles. This is how a muscle bundle looks like. It is like a tube-like structure. We are just seeing the top view of the muscle bundle. So if, if you just try to see how it is inside, just it is as if I have extracted out one muscle bundle just to show you how it is. It is a long cylindrical structure. This was just the top view. Now each of these is again made up of so many muscle fibers. So each of these one again is extracted 
out to show it clearly. So each of these is a muscle fiber. So each of these which you see is a muscle fiber. And inside this muscle fiber you have uh, organelles which are very similar to the organelles inside a cell. What is sarcolemma? Sarcolemma is nothing but the membrane which binds each muscle fiber. So this membrane is known as sarcolemma. So here if you see this, this muscle fiber will have a membrane around itself. This muscle fiber will again have a membrane around itself. So this membrane will be known as sarcolemma. So sarcolemma is basically the plasma membrane surrounding the muscle fiber. Sarcoplasm. Sarcoplasm would be the fluid-like substance which is present inside each muscle fiber. So inside this muscle fiber also you have a fluid-like structure which is present. That is like how you have cytoplasm in the cell. Similarly, you have sarcoplasm inside the muscle fiber. And then you have the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is just like the endoplasmic reticulum which you have inside the cell. So here inside the muscle fiber, the sarcoplasmic reticulum is that organelle which is rich in calcium ions. And that is why you would have heard your, uh, your mom asking you to drink a lot of milk if you want your muscles to be strong. Because bones, muscles, all of these are made up of calcium. So calcium is one of the important constituents of muscles and bones. So this calcium is stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So sarcolemma is the boundary or the plasma membrane of each muscle fiber. Inside the muscle fiber, you have the fluid called sarcoplasm and you have sarcoplasmic reticulum which stores calcium. So these are briefly the different parts inside the skeletal muscle structure. Now let us have a detailed knowledge of each of these parts. So we will start with fascicles. Fascicles is just another name for the muscle bundles. So these fascicles together constitute the muscle, muscle tissue. As I said, each of these is a fascicle. So all of them bind together to form the muscular tissue. Next is the fascia which connects the muscle tissues together. So it is a connective tissue which connects the fascicles or the muscle bundles. Third is the muscle fibers. As I said, long tubular cells forming the muscle fibers, they can be up to several centimeters in length. Now these muscle fibers are one of the longest cells of the human body. They can be very long, they can be up to several centimeters in length. So that means they are one of the longest cells of the human body. And many muscle fibers, that is here you can see this is one muscle fiber, right? So many such cylindrical structures together form the muscle bundles. Like this is one muscle fiber. So here if you see, this is one muscle fiber and many such muscle fibers together form this which is the muscle bundle and many such muscle bundle which are these together form this muscle tissue. Next is sarcolemma. It is the plasma membrane lining the muscle fiber. So the membrane lining this muscle fiber is sarcolemma. Next is sarcoplasm, which is the cytoplasm of muscle fiber. So inside the muscle fiber, the fluid which is present is called sarcoplasm and these are multinucleated. That means inside the muscle fiber, you have multiple nucleus. So one muscle fiber is considered like one cell, right? Like a human body. We, when we talk about the human body, we say that it is made up of different organs. Organs in turn are made up of tissues, which in turn are made up of cells. So here also the my muscle fiber is at the cellular level. So each muscle fiber is just one cell. So that cell will have the sarcoplasm, the cell will have a sarcolemma, the cell will also have multiple nucleus. Sarcoplasmic reticulum. It is like the endo, it is the endoplasmic reticulum of muscle fibers and it is also the storehouse of calcium ions. And calcium ions is very much required for the activity of the muscles and that is why intake of calcium ions can strengthen your, can make your muscles strong. So this is about the structure of the skeletal muscle tissue. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.